people of the world, it's Kira, and to you I say a Merry Christmas. Now you might be thinking, Kira, isn't it still November? Is that not a little bit early to be talking about Christmas? And to that I say absolutely not. Christmas is my favourite time of year by far. I very courteously wait until after Halloween to start getting really excited about it, but essentially as soon as November is here, I think it is all systems go for Christmas and I just feel like the more time we have to enjoy Christmas, the happier the world will be. And so today I'm here with a three cinnamon tea, which I didn't even know that there were three types of cinnamon, but that tastes incredible. A gingerbread yoga meditating mug and some festive and cozy book recommendations for you. Now don't worry if you're not super into Christmas, these aren't all Christmassy books. In fact, I think only two of them could be described as actually officially Christmas themed books. The other ones are books that I just really enjoy reading at Christmas time, or I think are either super wintry or super cozy. So if you're not as festive or Christmassy as I am, fear not, there are some recommendations here for you as well. And I hope you'll all enjoy these cozy books that I think are perfect for this time of year. So we might as well start with what I think is the most obvious book on this list and also probably the most explicitly Christmassy and that book is A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. Now this is obviously a Christmas classic both in the sense that it is a book that a lot of people read at Christmas time and the sense that it is a classic set at Christmas so it had to be used for this reading recommendations list because I just think it's perfect for this time of year. It is obviously an iconic Christmas story, it has been the source of inspiration for so many amazing Christmas films including The Muppets Christmas Carol, one of my personal favourites and it is also just a really really lovely story. I also think this one is great for anyone who is kind of off put Charles Dickens's writing style because it is really really short which is unusual for him his books are usually quite long and for that reason it gets to the point quite quickly there's a lot less flowery overly descriptive language that is really difficult to get into and it's also a story that I think a lot of people are familiar with so it gets a lot easier to understand because you kind of know what to expect. Either way, I just think this is a really great book to read at Christmas time. It is just such a fabulous Christmas story, really interesting, heartwarming, lovely tale of Victorian morality. And I personally really enjoy it and think that it's great for anyone who maybe isn't that keen on classics but wants to try them or wants to get into classics but doesn't know where to start because it's so short and so easy to get into and it'll be over before you even have begun. Kind of like the night that Scrooge wakes up on. And moving from the entirely obvious to the slightly more obscure, there is a book that I read every single December for no reason other than the first time I read it was at Christmas time and for that reason it just feels like Christmas to me. And that book is The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chlosky. I love this book so much. I probably read this book for the first time when I was like 13 or 14 and it has remained a firm favourite ever since. I just think it is such a wonderful story of self-love and growth and development and friendship and I absolutely love it. For anyone who isn't familiar with either the book or the film, which I also love, essentially this book follows our main character Charlie. Charlie is a freshman in high school and he essentially has no friends. His friend from middle school passed away between the years of middle school and high school and he's kind of going into high school not knowing what to do with himself but then he manages to make friends with a group of seniors I guess quite an unlikely friendship but they really hit it off and he particularly makes friends with um, a stepbrother and stepsister called Sam and Patrick and they really help Charlie come out of his shell and just kind of become way more confident meet new people and essentially come to terms with being a much more confident version of himself in kind of seeing that other people can like him, we see Charlie's self-perception develop and grow and it's really, really wonderful. So at its heart, it is a story about friendship, but there are also some much more serious themes about trauma, post-traumatic stress and also abuse. So obviously do be aware of that if that's something that might affect you. But in general, I do think it's a really, really heartwarming story and I just absolutely love it. 
part of this book is set at Christmas time, so I guess you could say it does have some Christmas in it, but on the whole, it's just a book that feels like Christmas to me. And if you haven't read it already, then I feel like now is a perfect time to pick it up because it's just such a lovely story. So the next book on the list is one that sounds like it should be Christmassy, but actually isn't particularly festive. However, it is very cozy and heartwarming and therefore still perfect for this time of year. And that is We Met in December by Rosie Curtis. This is a romance book which focuses on two main characters, Jess and Alex. Jess and Alex don't actually know each other at the beginning of this book, however they meet through a mutual friend. Their mutual friend essentially inherits this big house in Notting Hill which she doesn't want to live in on, on her own and so she invites loads of her friends who wouldn't otherwise be able to afford to live in that area to move in with her and have this really fun house share and so Jess and Alex are two of those people and they're like basically living the dream because they otherwise wouldn't be able to afford in this lovely big house and they get the opportunity to meet loads of new people. So on the first night in this house share Jess and Alex hit it off and it seems like there might be a little bit of romantic chemistry between them but then other things come up and it very quickly kind of melts away and over the course of the next year they develop a really really strong friendship. And so that's the reason why I wouldn't say this is actually a festive book because it starts and ends in December but it actually takes place over the course of a full year and I think this is just such a wonderful book because although romance is kind of like burning in the background of the entirety of the book it's actually a book about kind of Again, self-growth, that seems to be a theme in these books that I really enjoy, but it's kind of about like learning who you are, what you want to do, where you want to be in life, going through the prospect of career changes and all of those things that happen in your 20s, and then building a really strong friendship. And it's a book which I think really emphasizes how good a romance can be when friendship is at the basis of the relationship. And it's just such a wonderful story. So it is one that's great to read at Christmas time, although you don't have to explicitly read it at Christmas because it's not a Christmassy book but I think the coziness makes it perfect for a wintertime read. Next up we have a classic that I read for the first time this year and the reason I actually finally got around to reading this particular classic was because a movie adaptation came out around Christmas time last year and it was absolutely incredible and that book slash movie I guess is Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. The new adaptation of this book came out on, I think, Boxing Day last year, and I saw it before the end of 2019 and absolutely fell in love with it. It was incredible. And if you haven't seen that adaptation yet, I highly recommend it because it is just so, so beautiful and amazing. I absolutely am obsessed. And so because I enjoyed the movie adaptation so much, I picked up this book in the first couple of months of 2020. And again, I loved it, but I think partially because I watched the movie around Christmas time and partially because it is just another really lovely, heartwarming story. I actually think I'm going to try to reread this one in December because it is just so perfect for this time of year. Little Women actually does start at Christmas time and I think it's just such a wonderful story. We follow these four sisters, Jo, Amy, Meg and Beth, who are children at the beginning of the book and we essentially follow them right through until adulthood and see them kind of transform into really strong, powerful and driven women. It's a really wonderful story about marrying up society's expectations with your own passions and goals. It also focuses on family and the love that bonds these sisters together, but also the way that different sort of periods of animosity and like tension can rise between family members and how that affects their growth and development in their relationship with each other. There's also romance in there and it is just a book which I think tackles so many different topics and I think the way that you get to explore these four different sisters who in some ways are so similar but in others are so different is just incredible because as a book written in the like 1800s I believe it's just so amazing to see a book that is so clearly driven by a feminist and has those feminist ideals at its heart because it really is about the way that women can be both homely, maternal and feminine as well as driven and powerful and intelligent and I just think it's such a wonderful book. Not necessarily Christmassy specifically but I think great for this time of year. Now, most of the books on this TBR are really cozy, lovely, heartwarming, and just generally happy reads. However, I do... That was like the loudest train ever. 
I was going to say that although most of the books are really cozy and heartwarming lovely books to pick up that are just making you feel so happy when you read them, I do have one slightly more dark and chilling read to recommend you which I also think is perfect for that more like bleak winter type of read and that book is Misery by Stephen King. Misery is set in wintertime, which does create this really atmospheric, dark, wintry vibe when you're reading it. But just in general, I think it is such a chilling book that it does really fit into winter. And you know, maybe you don't want to read entirely heartwarming, happy, romantic reads. And sometimes you do want something that's a little bit more gripping and dark. And this book definitely fulfills that. In this book, we follow our main character, Paul, who is an author. Paul goes off to write his books in this cabin in Colorado that's kind of like part of his writing and like journey and the way that he finishes all of his books. And as he finishes his most recent manuscript, he basically leaves Colorado and is basically like heading back to fly back to New York, which is where he's based. And then he is caught in a crash because there is some terrible conditions in Colorado on the roads. It's snowing and he basically like goes off into a snow drift and is kind of destined to die until he is saved by the wonderful Annie Wilkes. Annie, as it turns out, is a nurse and also Paul's number one fan. What do you know? That is just such good luck for Paul, or so you might think. But Annie takes Paul back to her house and instead of taking him to a hospital like a sane and normal person might, Annie decides to take Paul's recovery into her own hands and essentially keeps him hostage at her home where she is responsible for his care and also for his life. Annie reads the manuscript that Paul had just finished and let's just say she isn't very happy with what he does to one of her favourite characters and so as she has the control over Paul she is the one looking after him, giving him access to medicine, keeping his pain under control. She basically instructs Paul that if he wants to get out of her house alive then he is going to rewrite the story and give her the ending that she wants. And so we have this incredibly intense and very very like narrow focused book in which we only have two characters for the entirety of the novel basically and we're just following this really really closely focused book where we're focusing on these two very very intense characters. Annie is such an interesting villain because she's a villain that doesn't necessarily view herself as one. She thinks that she's doing the right thing, she is quite like godly, she doesn't swear and all of that kind of stuff and yet she is obviously very much the villain in this story and then we have Paul who basically becomes this shell of himself because he is so desperate to live and he ends up doing these things that he would never have normally agreed to do in his real life and he kind of loses all of his will and all of his morals that uphold him in everyday life just being focused on staying alive. And I think this is probably my, well, this is definitely my favourite Stephen King because it isn't paranormal at all and yet it really focuses on the dark side of humanity and what we can do in desperate circumstances. And I think it's so interesting that this book is so gripping given the fact that it focuses on such a small cast of characters and yet these two characters and the dynamic that they have between each other, the ways that they manipulate one another is just so interesting and it is such a chilling read and I would say actually the scariest Stephen King that I've read because it really just brings out this unhinged character and it is so tense at all times you just have no idea what's going to happen and it is incredible. The next book we have I guess bridges the gap between the two types of books that I've been recommending. This one is both dark and gritty and has some really serious themes but it's also really cosy and at its core is a really heartwarming read and that book is Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine by Gail Honeyman. I read this book for the first time two Christmases ago, it was Christmas 2018, and I absolutely loved it. I've been meaning to reread this basically since then because it was so, so good. And this is one of those books that I basically recommend at every given opportunity because I think it's so incredible. It's a book which is so surprising and so amazing. I absolutely love it. So in this book we follow our main character Eleanor Oliphant and as the title would suggest she's someone that thinks that she is completely fine. However it also becomes very clear that she is a high functioning alcoholic and someone that is dealing with quite a lot of internal issues. She lives a very monotonous life which is kind of framed by going out to work, coming home, drinking, and then doing the same thing over and over and over again. She is someone who very much is set in her ways, isn't very sociable, and just kind of lives her life focusing on herself. 
but at the beginning of the book it would seem that she does have some desire to kind of step out of her comfort zone and in particular she wants to be involved in some kind of romantic relationship but I think her perception of herself and the way that other people view her are very very skewed and this is a very interesting narrative where she's kind of somewhat aware that people think that she's weird but also doesn't know the extent to which she kind of like contributes to that external view and then throughout the book we see her getting inadvertently involved in a few friendships and we see certain wonderful characters be really really patient with Eleanor and try to help her sort of come to terms with how she can be a better person, how she can be a good friend to people but also understanding that she might be sort of dealing with some much more dark internal issues and figuring out how to help her sort of come out of her shell and offer the support that she maybe otherwise had been lacking and those characters really help to bring Eleanor out of this dark hole that she'd been living in and it's just so wonderful to see her gradually become a much more like functioning member of society and someone who actually does have friends that care about her, friends that she can rely on and then someone that she can be that support to as well. This book has some really interesting twists that I did not see coming at all and it's a book which I think is really heartwarming because we see Eleanor go on this incredible journey and just become a much happier person which I think is at the core of this book that she is someone who has been fine absolutely but isn't thriving and isn't happy and by the end of the book I think that we see her go on this incredible journey and we see this wonderful transformation that is just so amazing to witness. I started this cosy list of books with a very, very Christmassy pick and it only seems right to finish with one as well. So the final book on this recommendations list is an Island Christmas by Jenny Colgan. I actually read this book for the first time last Christmas in a Christmas themed 24 hour readathon and I loved it. This is a book which is set on a really tiny island called Muir just off the coast of Scotland and it has a really really close knit small town community vibe which just feels so cosy. In this book we mostly focus on two main characters. First of all we have Flora, her family lives on the island and she comes from there but she has opted to move away and lives in a bigger city with her boyfriend and they've just come back for the Christmas period and she kind of feels like her boyfriend judges her from being from this small town and doesn't really enjoy that community vibe. And then on the other hand we have Safe who is the doctor on the island. He is a refugee and he lives on the island with his two young children. His wife isn't yet with them and he's constantly waiting for news of her and he very much feels like he's looking for that community spirit but hasn't yet found it because he's an outsider and doesn't quite have his place on the island yet despite everyone being really welcoming and trying to make him feel like sort of part of the community. And gradually these two characters have a lot of crossovers between one another and we see their stories intertwining, not in a romantic sense, but we just see all these characters coming together to help people in difficult times. It's really festive, really cosy, and I think what makes this such a great book for this time of year isn't actually the fact that it's set at Christmas, although that definitely helps, it's the fact that it is just such a cosy, heartwarming, small town community vibe and I just think that feels so perfect for this time of year. So those are some of the books I absolutely think that you should read at this time of year, especially if you're looking for something cosy and just wintry to read when it's cold outside and you're getting cosy with a book and a cup of tea inside. If you've got any books that you'd recommend people to read at this time of year, I'd love for you to let us know in the comments down below. I'm always on the lookout for more cosy books to pick up at this time of year. And if you've read any of these books that I've recommended, I'd love to know your thoughts. Thank you so, so much for watching. Merry Christmas.